A big 10x event is going on right now in Raid Shadow Legends and everybody's going crazy about the legendaries and trying to pull the legendaries. There's a guaranteed legendary event. But nobody seems to be talking about the two epics that we have offered and this will be the showcase for today. I've done multiple videos on these two champions before. Skullcarn and Tinesha, I think these two Knight Revenant epics are is one of the best combo to have in your kit of champions and you can utilize it in so many different ways i wouldn't say they're good for the clan boss but every single other area you can utilize them both together to get some big big um you know improvements to your timing clearing let's say the dungeons the faction wars even the doom tower so let's get this video started with the two champions i have them equipped right now in damage gear both of them are built the same in terms of uh, damage they're running a savage set and of course they're running hell smasher but in general these two champions can be used more for the pve content if you want to run war master the hell smasher is also good if you want to do a pvp build with them as well but the blender team it's what it's called with them two together does not work that well anymore because of all the reaction gear that it's available but that, that does not mean that once you are just pushing into uh, gold arena that these two champions will not be useful so why they're so good so skull crown has this a1 skill that does a double hitting attack on enemies over 50 percent health this is amazing because it really benefits from her going first and then you'll have sinesha which has a very similar skill her a1 does a double hitting attack when enemies are under 50 percent health so all you need is to them have to be together. You have Skullcrown going in first, and then you've got Sinesha. Skullcrown also has a weekend debuff application to her A2 skill, which is why I'm running here with a little bit of accuracy to get that 200 mark right there. So both of them together, Helm Smasher, you're going to see some big numbers coming in for the dungeons and how they can be used together to go through and push those dungeons uh, as quickly as possible and you'll understand what i mean once i show you the clear speed that both of them have all right this team that i've put together is a very basic team with even arbiter there uh in the lead um i could i think sinesha is faction crypts i think the same way for skull crown this is arena so uh, there's no speed lead that i can use i've got a defense style that can do weak hits so we might see some um no defense downs on the enemies but i'm still running with this one as a very base team to have dark hell is there only basically for the boss so the idea is to utilize skullcrown and sinesha together to get some big damage numbers for the waves to clear them let's say you don't have anything such as uh you know seer and seer makes the clearing of the waves very very quick so let's go and have a look at how this is gonna work for uh for this part right so we got Dark Hill doing his thing. We've got a defense down maybe. No, we only had one. But look at Sinesha now going after Skull Crown and almost taking them out with no defense downs on the enemy waves. We're looking at 16 seconds, 18 seconds now because I had it on a 1x speed. And look at that. Double burst there. Takes them to about 50% health. Wasn't really enough. But because I do have them with about 180 speed, both of them, plus Arbiter in there, it's very likely that they'll be getting uh, double the turns uh, throughout the fight. And look at that, 38 seconds, we reached the boss, and now it's all about having a very strong champion for each boss that you're facing. Here you need Poisoners. Any champion with a Poisoner can help you get the Dragon down much, much quicker. The bad thing about Sinisha and Skullcrown is that their utility, once they reach a boss, is not that great. So that's why you need to have a kind of support in there uh, in terms of boss damage. Okay, You need to have maybe the Allure to keep the Termiter down. And they'll have the damage to get through the boss's health. Uh, of course, here for the Dragon, the amount of poisons really helps with taking it down quicker. This doesn't really work with other bosses. But an amazing, amazing combination of those two together to get the um, the waves done quickly, quickly, and just reach the boss. So um, we'll see the overall damage in the end. We see the unkillable proc from Skull Crown, an amazing kit for both of these champions. And I actually have for Sinesha her skills locked out. I want her to just be doing her A1 skill. I don't care about her healing. I don't care about her equalization of her HP. That is a very good skill to have probably for faction wars rather than anything else but for this one i've just running here for damage and skull current does not have anything uh, of her skills locked 
And you see there, 1.3 from Skull Crown, 1.2 from Sinesha. And Sinesha is not even an attacker, she's a support if you look at her tag. So her multipliers and her base stats are much lower than Skull Crown's. And uh, let's go and have a look at a different dungeon, which might be a little bit different. So let's say the Fire Knight. Uh, Fire Knight has much stronger, um, much stronger enemies for the wave. So again, we're going to be testing the power of this. I'm going to put in there the Allure, which I just mentioned about her being the one that enables uh, the, the killing of the boss because you'll have the Termitor thing basically locked down, right? So we'll, we'll test this team out and see how it works with just the um, the built out Allure. Allure is built very quick, but still you can have her. Anything above 220 speed is fantastic for this kind of thing. Look at that. Eight seconds, we go through wave one. It is just amazing on what you can do with even more things in there. Let, let's say a good aura with a speed booster alongside it and uh, a good defense down champion that also does provide any, something more. But I still think Stagnite is fantastic here. Here, without even a defense down, by the way, we got the waves because Stagnite used his defense down during wave one. So we were just going in with the power of uh, Skull Crown and Sinesha. So 38 seconds again to reach the boss. A fantastic time for this specific encounter for the Fire Knight. Fire Knight is notoriously the toughest one because of how much different it is than all the other bosses because of the shield, the way that it works. The, the waves are just tougher, higher defense, higher HP than all the other bosses. And here with the lore, we just keep the Terminator down. Look at that. Beautiful with the speed down as well from Stagnite. And this should be a, a pretty solid run with controlling the Terminator and then having the hits coming in from Skull Current Sinesha. Again, the bad thing is because of the, the Helm Smasher, we don't see... Um, we don't see the Warmaster procs that that would have helped in terms of damage. But look at Sinesha's A1 skill with the attack up. She's doing about 80,000 per hit on her A1 skill, which is amazing to consider uh, that she is, again, a support champion. Look at that, 64, 77k. And she's only with the Savage set. She's not even with the Savage Cruel set combo. So look at that, 1 minute 35, a very, very solid thing to do. And it was just basically Skull Clown Sinesha showing their power. Allure there was just for the Terminator. If I let's say you don't even have Stagnite, right? Let's me let me just remove Stagnite as well from there. And um, I wonder if I just to run the two armagers there. If this is gonna be, uh, let's say, where is my other armager? Just to show that even if you don't have a lore, you have these two champions, you'll be at a very good position. Two armagers, not so many people have two of them, and my armagers are built um, quite good. But still, let's see if this works and if I can manage to get it down. There's no multi-hitters in this team, so it will be a little bit tough. But we do have a reviver, so we'll see how that goes. And look at look at Sinesha there. Even without a defense down, we're doing some work, which I'm okay with. Sinesha should go next. Look at those extra turns, come on. <laughs> Uh, even if we go low, we do have the Reviver uh, being Arbiter, so that's great. 26 seconds, this was way longer, but it's fine. Remember what we're trying to do here. Uh, we don't have a defense down, which is gonna suck, but still, we have a weekend, probably from Skull Crown. Wow, look at, talk about extra turns there from Armager. And look at that. Counter attack because of the defensive masteries. That is exactly why I took it. There's the weekend. We want Sinesha now to do a double hit. Look at that double hit. 27 plus 28k coming in from that attack. And then Skull Crown does it. A minute. So with no defense down, uh, it was still a very good time to do. Although they do have very good gear, right? The Savage gear is not that easy to get. I understand that. But even with mediocre gear, you have to remember 20 seconds, 30 seconds more than this. It's still a great time to clear these. So, boom, Armager gets gets lucky, but doesn't get lucky because double, double resist there. I don't even know how he got a double resist. I thought he had enough accuracy in that build. Um, let's keep on going. Maybe, maybe it's the one that doesn't have so much accuracy. Maybe it's that one. Okay, that one does have accuracy. This one doesn't, doesn't look to have accuracy. Maybe it's the one I use for Dragon. 
Uh, so he does the uh, A2 skill and does a lot of damage to that. Yeah, he definitely doesn't have any accuracy. So again, you see how this works. Um, you just build them with a little bit of accuracy and you'll get through. It's a fantastic combo of them together to clear the waves. They work great for Arena too, as long as you don't face so many enemies for Arena, which have the reaction gear. Reaction gear is what has the chance to do a weak hit against the enemies. You don't want that happening. You actually want to be uh, landing those crits if you're uh, running a speed team that goes first and does those uh, big crits. So let's refresh here. Let's have a look at the Blender team again. So Arbiter, Sidnesha, Skull Crown, and an Ally Attack Champion. We do have the Fusion coming in, which is going to be an Ally Attack Champion. Not as good as Firekin for that specific role. I would say he just gives critical damage up. Firekin provides critical damage up and critical rate up, which is amazing to just even lower the amount of gear needed for them. Right now, I have them with some speed, which is not what you need. You don't even need speed. You have them with attack percent as much as possible. Critical rate, critical damage. You get that 70% because Farrakhan will be boosting it. And that creates the ideal uh, blender team. I have total showcases of that specific team that I'm talking about. And it's amazing. It's amazing uh, on how much damage output they can do. But the problem is now with the meta, again, with the reaction gear, which gives a chance for the defending team to not get crit on because of uh, having those reaction pieces and not getting a crit on is, is basically just a very basic hit happening on them. So let's have a look at how this team is going to go. Wonder if they're faster. They're not. They don't even have the speed lead. But uh, the idea here is to just see the damage coming in from Skull Crown first and then Sinesha. They're going in. Boom. Look at that. And just clearing through them all. Uh, the good thing about this. This combo of two champions together is that they work great with an ally tag champion and they work even better for, let's say, the Doom Tower where you give both of them stun sets and that AOE attack with the stun gear is just an amazing chance for you to just stun all the enemies and establish control, especially when you're trying to push for higher Doom Tower stages where, uh, okay, you understand that uh, you don't probably have the, the, the gear to do it but you do have stun gear. If you do have stun gear, you can establish control very quickly when pushing through and trying to beat harder and harder stages of the Doom Tower. So you build a very similar, similar team to, to the one I showed. Oh yeah, this is my uh, Doom Tower presets, but you build Arbiter there, Skull Crown, Sinesha. If you've got an ally attack champion, that's great. You maybe build another stun champion. In there you got three champions that can possibly stun, and then you got another champion in there for some extra damage. And you'll get through the waves and reach the bosses. Once you reach the bosses, it's all about the specific um, strategies that each boss has to actually beat them. Let's say the Frozen Spider, you need HP Burns to take it down or a Block Revive. Guys, this was the showcase of Skull Currency and Nesha. I hope you got an idea of how strong the, these two champions together can be. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!